So I played with you Friday in the prom. I weren't great, were I? You were okay. Well, you I had some for me really, alone. really, really good shots. But the issue is, you don't have the predictability of strike. No. And you don't have the predictability of ball flight. No. Right, because you don't understand what impact looks like. Probably not, no. No, because no. this see, it's the most important function in the golf swing, but nobody thinks about it. Right, so I'm always tinkling, but no, I don't think about it in the ball. Perfect, go on then. So, so just, hit me, just hit me a few. Just hit me six or seven balls. Very good. And again. Right, so the, so the first one drew, the second one faded. It did. Okay, perfect. So we've got a difference in ball flight. So what's your process? What are you thinking about? At the moment, in my head, just because yeah. I first found it myself, all I'm thinking is take away, trying to keep this okay. straight. That's per it. Right, perfect. So what you are, and you're like pretty much every other amateur golfer that plays the game, right, is what you all are, is you, and I love you all dearly, but you're all what we call internally focused, all right? So you're worried about what your left arm's doing and your right hip's doing and your right ear's doing and how much your right arm's bending. While you're doing all that, what's that doing? I don't know. Perfect, yeah? And that's gotta be the most important thing because what I've gotta get you to do and what I, you know, my whole philosophy behind coaching golf and helping people get better is the idea that, figure this out, that that thing's an incredibly stupid object, isn't it? It messes with my head. It messes with everybody's head. Right, what does that understand? Nothing. Yeah, it does. It understands one incredibly important thing. It understands what that tells it. Right, okay. Right, so, make, okay, okay. right so if I bring the club face back in, and this is the easiest way of showing you, if I bring the club face at impact back to the golf ball from the same place I started it from, where's the ball gonna go? Straight. Perfect. If I bring it in pointed over there, where's the ball going to go? If I bring it in point over there, where's the ball going to go? Exactly, uh, left. Right. So... No left. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get the idea that we become more externally focused on what the club head actually does to the golf ball, where's that ball going to go? Where it, where it's, Absolutely, where the yeah. face is pointing. Perfect. Right. Because we know 75% of where the ball starts is where the face points. We get that. Yeah, the rest of it is path. Right, so what you've got to have is you've got to have a concept. And my whole deal behind a golf swing, Liam, is no more difficult to do than that, right? So golf's a pendulum-like motion. Right, three questions for you. Would you think that that club pretty much swings along the same line each and every time when I do that? Yes. Perfect. At the bottom of the arc, does the club face pretty much come back to the same place each and every time? Yes. With me doing how much work at the top? Not a lot. Just about enough to stop that happening? Right, so your next set of questions then has got to be, if the club swings along the same line each and every time and the face comes back at the bottom in the same place each and every time, where's the ball going to go? Straight. Perfect, right. Let's figure that out. Do me a favour, set up to that one, but don't hit it. In between the red flags. Yeah, yeah. whatever, doesn't matter. Tell me when you're ready. Whatever happens, don't hit it. Ready. Okay, take your left hand off it. Okay, cool. Right, so I'm going to put my left hand in with your right hand. Yep. Brilliant. Now, what I want you to do is relax your forearm for me. Okay? Beautiful. There you go. So, as, and you've heard this before, let the club do the work. Well, that's a great idea if you know how to do it. Where's the club face? At the bottom. That's right. Perfect. Now, let me do all the work. Okay? Keep your arm really relaxed. Where's the ball go? That's right. Perfect. Let's do it again in case the first one was a fluke. Right, relax that arm, softer. There you go, beautiful. Where's the ball go? On top of the other. Yeah. Come on, we're on a hat trick now, we're looking really good, yeah? Soften that arm. Beautiful. Where's that go? On top of the other. Perfect. So the deal is, once you allow that grip and arm pressure to be correct on this end, that end's gonna square itself up. It has to. So you're saying it's that simple as that and that have got the same pressure? I'm saying the pressure in your arms has got to be correct to allow that club face, because watch, all I'm going to do is let that club face, it's upside down over there, would you agree? Yes. Okay, all I'm going to do is swing it back to the ball. Where's the club face come back to? That's just straight. Perfect, because it has to, because it's the way the club's designed. 
yeah, it's designed to come back to where? Square. Yeah. Yeah, because Mizuno and Titus, what they do is they spend millions and millions of their research and development dollar on getting that thing to come back to square. And then they sell them to us and we bring them back looking like that and looking like that and it's all over the gaff. So what we've got to do in the first instance is we've got to make sure the pressure on this end is correct so we allow that end to swing as free as we can. So that defeats everything I've just said when I were trying to keep this. Correct. I'm so Tight. tense. Correct. Keeping that. Because we know we do everything better in a relaxed state than we do if we're uptight. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Makes sense. I hit a really good drive when we played on Friday and you went, nice, relaxed swing. Perfect. Absolutely. I because that's the that, whole but... idea. And the greatest athletes have figured this out. Yeah. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tiger Woods, doesn't matter. Yeah. That they perform better when they're in a relaxed state. So we're going to get you in that state. Right. So this time, put both hands back on. Right, now whatever happens now, don't take your hands off it. Stand up and put the club shaft so she's vertical. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now totally relax your arms just and so you've got hold of it. Perfect. Tell me about the weight of the club at that point. Okay. Is it heavy? Is it light? Heavy now. Reasonably heavy? Yeah, okay. Top. Yeah. Okay. But your arm pressure is minimal, yes? Uh, no, I can still feel it. Right, that. soften your arms even more then. Got it? Arm pressure is. Bare minimum there, yeah. yes? Perfect. We're going to call that pressure level one. I'm coming back to that in a minute. One. Pressure level one. Let it fall forwards nice and slowly until you get that to horizontal. Now what's happened? Pressure's on my arms. Perfect. It? This has got heavier. Yeah. And the pressure in your arms has increased. Massively. Perfect. That's pressure level five. That's too tight. And you're holding it way tighter than that. I am. Yeah. Right, take it back up to 45 degrees. Now what's it feel like? It's lighter. Yeah, pressure two and a half. Three, we'll call it three. three. We don't right. do halves. Yeah? yeah? So we know that's too light. Yeah. We know that's too tight. Yeah. And we know that's perfect. Now, if you make some big old circles with that club head, which end of the club can you feel, the head or the handle? Head. Perfect. Hold it as tight as you normally hold it. Now make the circles. Now which end you got? My hands. Always. Yeah. So with the best one in the world, if you're holding it too tight, you can only feel this end and you've got no idea what that end's doing. This is interesting. Though. Right. Let me show you what we're going to do. Now let me tell you what this isn't. It's not the pressure in your hands, it's the pressure in your arms. Right. Because we want your fingers secure on the handle, but your arms relaxed. So just grab hold of that club in a minute and twist it. So that would be too light, that's pressure level one. Yeah. This is where you live, <laughs> which is way too tight. <laughs> Give yourself a nine. Yeah, and this is where I want you to live. So see my fingers are secure on the handle, but my arms are relaxed. Yeah. Perfect. So this is what we're gonna do. Is that number three? That's three. Okay. So what we're gonna focus on is two things. We're gonna focus on swinging this big heavy lump on the end of this stick, and we're gonna focus on the pressure levels in your arms. So pressure level one, do you know what wet spaghetti looks like? Yes. Perfect. So pressure level one is going to feel like wet spaghetti looks. So it's going to look like her and her. Yeah? Yeah. Which is obviously no good to anybody. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to some sort of mad death grip, which you'll be quite good at. Yeah? Which is Liam's grip. Which is, yeah, Liam's grip and everybody else that I, I help. Yeah? Which is pressure level five, which is as tight as you can get hold of it. <laughs> and we stone cold top it. And then we're going to figure out where three is in the middle. Which is that one and that one. Okay? Now here's the big news about this. Whatever pressure level you're working on, it has to be the same as you go backwards, downwards and forwards. So when it's one, it's one, one and one. When you get to five, it's five, five and five. When you get back to three, it's three, three and three. And that's all I want you to do. First one, so we're going to get externally focused on this end. Yeah. And your arms are going to be a pressure level one, which is like wet spaghetti backwards, downs, and forwards. Okay. So as loose and as light as you can hold this thing without the thing coming out your hands and me having to go down the range and get it. Very good. Like I said, no good to anybody. Yeah. And yeah. again, do me a pressure level one again. It's hard, actually, isn't it? it is. Rolled it that soft. Yeah, because it's counterintuitive. I don't want it going yeah. camera. <laughs> Come on, soft as you can. Very good. Where's the ball gone? 
Straightish. Perfect. Right, now this time, get hold of it as tight as you can. Right, okay. I mean really, 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 really tight. Right, it's gripping tight. Oh yeah, as tight as you can get yeah. hold of this thing. And really tight, really tight. Oh look. Okay, so the minute that you tighten up, the ball goes off at all sorts of weird and wonderful angles. Yes. Right. So this time, we know what one feels like, we know what five feels like. This time, give me three. So go back and find your process, figure out that's one, figure out that's five, which is horizontal, that's it, and figure out where three is. Go on then. So all you're gonna focus on is swinging the head and keeping the arm pressure constant as you go backwards, downs, and forwards. Okay. Swing the head, keep the arm pressure the same. Where's the ball gone? Straight, it's a bit with heavy, a, but straight. With a it? tiny little bit of draw on it. And the wind's right to left. Perfect. Right, okay. Right? I felt like very light that, so obviously I must be doing it too heavy, too tight. We felt like... Your normal is too tight because... Yes, that's so the way. What, what, but the great thing about that is to understand what the correct level of relaxation is, we've got to understand what tension feels like. Yeah. Yeah, so we know now, yeah, that you were just way too tight on it. So we have a specific process where we can allow that club to come back to exactly the same position every single time because you're not interfering with it. Go then. So are you at three at address? Yes. Right, awesome. keep it the same backwards, downs and forwards. Where's the ball gone? Nice. Exactly the same place. I felt myself releasing dead easy. Well, next. you will, because what will happen, every club that you own is yep. lighter on the toe end. Yep. Okay, so through impact, what does the club actually want to do? Turn. It wants to turn. So what's the shape of a natural golf shot? I have no idea. It's got to be a draw. Right, okay. Yeah, because the golf swing's a circle. Yeah? Yeah. With an instrument that wants to rotate towards the golf ball. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why you feel you're releasing it, because you're also releasing it because the grip and arm pressure is super constant. Yeah? Yeah. Therefore, you're allowing the club to do what it wants to do. And the natural shape of a golf shot's got to be a draw. Yeah, Has nice, to be. It was a nice shot, that one, wasn't it? It was a great, but it was also a great strike. It sounded right, didn't it's it? It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're seeing yeah. it in the ball flight. Are you at three at address? Yes. Perfect. Keep it the same backwards, downwards, and forwards. Beautiful. I feel like, I don't know. It's moving, if that makes sense. What's moving? The club. Or is that more the re release? Well, no, because it's the first time in your golfing life you've ever felt the club at. Right. Yeah, because there was a great book written in the 1920s by a guy called Ernest Jones called Swing the Clubhead. Yeah, and all he talked about was basically if you allow the club, if your arm pressure is the same, your arms will drop at the speed of gravity. Yeah, 9.83 meters per second squared. You've then got a lever with mass on the end, yeah? So you're never holding the mass back from swinging. The minute your arms tighten up, you hold the mass back, the club slows down and the face can be misaligned at impact. There's many a time I'm trying to whip my hands. But you, you don't need to. No, but I'm probably doing that because my club's tight and I'm trying to... Yeah, you're trying to increase it. your speed. Yeah. Right, okay then, so where does speed come from? I don't know. Right. So go back to that. Where does that club head move at the fastest point? Bottom. Where's the ball at? Bottom. Perfect. So you're going to create maximum velocity at the appropriate time, which is the bottom of the arc. Yeah. So as long as the pressure on the handle is correct and constant, that club's got to be moving at the fastest point at the bottom of the arc. Yeah? yeah. So you're, therefore, you're going to hit it further and straighter with less effort. Yeah? Simple this, isn't it? Yes, because that's the whole point. And then you can draw and fade it at will because what you can now do is you can figure out where the club face is. So the rate of club face rotation then dictates which way the ball's going to spin. Okay. Yeah. Go on then. So you know this and everybody knows this in their own particular worlds, right? The, the only way we're ever going to get better answers is by asking better questions. We know this, okay? So you've got to ask yourself when you stand over that golf ball two better questions. So the first better question is, is my arm pressure at three at address? And did it stay constant as I went backwards, downwards and forwards? See if you can answer yes to both. Right. Are you at three at address? Yeah. Perfect, keep it the same backwards, downwards and forwards. Where's the ball gone? 
Oh, it's so new. Great. Oh, straight down the middle. But Absolutely. It's so new, great, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounded right, that, doesn't it? Hundred percent. I didn't yeah. try and hit that. But you don't ever need to. Hank Haney always used to talk about Tiger that he never once saw Tiger hit at a golf ball. Yeah. Tiger collected it. Yeah, that's and a that's great what way you're describing what that's just happened. Correct. Just... You collect it. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's. I have an equation for golf, right? That golf is basically talent minus interference. From that. From, well, mental interference creates physical interference, plus or minus luck. Now, talent I can do nothing about. Luck I can do nothing about. The only thing I can do is get your level of interference as close to zero as I can get it. Well, that has got to be zero interference until I increase the pressure on this end. Now what's happened? Stops. So therefore, you've now got to restart it. Tell me you can align the club face at impact. Yeah. Not a chance. True. Does that make any yeah, sense? Yeah, no, it makes why every now and again an amateur will have a good day. He's just got his timing right that day, hasn't it? Because the timing's correct because the pressure level's correct. Yeah. And I tell you where everybody has felt this. Jump out, let me show you. So on a par five or a par four, you can't get up. Yeah. And you're laying it up. Yes. Okay. They go, oh, right, I've got 175 to that water. Right, I'll just hit a little, just a little chippy 7-iron down there. Oh, get down. Flushed it. Because they flushed it. And then this, this is going to go with everyone. You've done the best analogy ever here. Because what they do is they, they're relaxed, their arm pressure's constant, and they hit a better shot than they've ever hit. Because they didn't try to. Because they didn't try. Because their arm pressure was totally, totally you know correct and know. totally, totally constant. You've all done that. Everybody's done it. Oh. Because what we do in, in our Western philosophy, we're told that we're meant to control stuff. Yeah? And this is why 95% of golfers slice it. Yeah? Because what they're all doing, they're all trying to hit it straight. Yeah? Yeah. So when they go in and they're trying to hit it straight, which is the most ridiculous shot in the world because it's the only one golf shot tour players are never trying to hit, we know that that toe wants to turn over. So what, they, what most amateurs are holding it too tight and the, the I want to hit it straight team, they hold the toe back from rotating over. Where's the club face? It's going open right now. Ball's yeah. going straight over there. And the longer the clubs get, the worse it gets. Yeah, because we're going to explore that in a minute. So the minute you can, you, so to hit a draw, you can almost introduce a third better question. So to hit a draw, we know we need the toe coming back before the heel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the third better question looks like, is my arm pressure at three at address? Yes. Is my arm pressure constant? Yes. Does the toe beat the heel back? Yes. Right, so if all three are correct, what's the shape of the golf shot got to be? It's got to be a little tiny baby draw. Has to be, because the message that is giving that is a draw shape. Yeah. Come on, then. So we're going to introduce a third better question. So set one up. Perfect. So if the arm pressure is correct, you're going to just turn the toe slightly before impact. Mm -hmm. Go on then. It's not correct. Yeah, okay, you know. Right. Okay. <laughs> Are you at three at address? Yeah. Keep it the same. Turn the toe. Big eye draw. <laughs> And that's how simple it is to change a no ball no flight. Chance, hit the thing. Perfect, you don't need to. You don't ever need to. Yeah? Because the minute the arm pressure's constant, and as you turn the toe, think about this. That every club that you own has a center of mass. So if I'm trying to hit it straight and I hold the toe back, the center of mass never gets to the golf ball. If I allow the toe to roll, the center of mass is always working towards the golf ball. Which way is the ball going to spin? Right, to, right left. to left, and you've always, always, always got to hit it out the middle. So the ball goes further, it turns over a little bit because the ball always comes out the sweet spot. I know what's coming here. Go on then. Well, you made me drive, but I know for a fact I'm holding that too tight now. Right it's now. All in, it's all in my head now. I'm right just... now, hang on then, but you've got to understand the concept. Hold them both like that, which is heavier. I am. Right. So as your clubs get longer, they get lighter. Right, okay. The only reason this thing goes further is because the stick's longer and you've got less loft on the head. Right, now most amateur golfers are pretty much normal human beings. 
I agree. Until they get on the first tee at their home club and they take the head cover off this thing and they regress into some sort of Neanderthal creature, yeah, that goes, right, driver, driver, go far, yeah, and they get the first tee, it's like, oh, yeah, do the same thing, but find what three feels like with that. So go back to your drill. Now that's super light. Yeah. There's no weight to it. No. That's nowhere near, anywhere near. That would be three. That's three. That's three, yeah. Right? So three better questions. Is your arm pressure at three at address? Did it stay the same backwards, downs and forwards and did you turn the toe? Let me know. Are you at three? Yeah. Keep it at three, turn the toe. Didn't quite turn the toe enough. So two out of three was great there. Yeah. Yeah, because you tried to hit it straight. Let's turn the toe then, just... So allow the... I feel like it was very light. I don't know if I... No. Might be wrong. Right, no, perfect. So we've always got to have feedback loops. We've always got to have something to I relate to. I too loose. No, it wasn't, because relate the strike quality to the consistency of the arm pressure. Yeah, arm pressure were fine. Perfect, because the strike quality was brilliant. Relate the ball flight to how much you do with the face. I did, it were open, wasn't it? Perfect. So what you did then, you brought the heel back first, that's why she went right, as opposed to the toe back first. Right, okay. Just standing on that, it doesn't matter if it goes like a bit right, does it? <coughs> no. Right, okay. 100%. So are you at three? Yeah. Okay, keep it at three. Turn the face. <laughs> Big eye draw. I didn't even try. Perfect, but what's the shape? Draw. Right. But I felt the release. Perfect. Now, think about this. That was this. a great shot. That, that was a brilliant shot, right? If there was something wrong with your swing mechanics. I've got three things to think of. It's all you need, but let's explore this. If there was something wrong with your swing mechanics, could you hit that shot? No. Perfect. So why on earth do, do people go out and tinker with their swing mechanics? I do it all the time. I can't stop myself. Yes, you can, because now you know what the truth looks like. Yeah? Because all you're doing, we've not done anything to your golf swing, so if you change the spin axis and get you hit it further and straight or further and draw in it, all we've done is we've figured out what that big heavy lump at the end of the stick's doing. Yeah. And I mean, you've that, got, I've still, that was a great shot. It was an it. absolutely brilliant shot because it did exactly what we wanted it to do. We yeah. wanted to start right and turn left in the air. Because they aren't, we answered three better questions. <laughs> yeah? This is a bit out there, right? But whenever you go for a golf lesson, right? In my world, in my opinion, you've got to get better straight away. This is not some nonsense that you've got to go away and work on for three months and come, and come back and do the next bit. That doesn't work. Because Stephen Hawking, when he went out looking for black holes, said that any theoretical model can only be correct if the observable evidence is correct. All right? Yeah. So he had to go and find an event horizon around a black hole. For us, the only two pieces of, of observable evidence that we've got is strike quality and ball flight. And the one thing that's never gonna lie to you is ball flight. True. Your wife will lie to you, your girlfriend will lie to you, yeah? If they're both lying to you at the same time, you're in real trouble, yeah? But the ball flight will never lie to you. So if you're leaving the face open, that ball's gotta go right. Yeah. If you allow the arm pressure to be correct and that toe to fractionally lead the heel back to the ball, that ball's gotta draw in the air. It can't do anything else. Yeah, because it's a flat surface hitting a round object. Yeah. And that's all we're doing. Not hard, no, is it? You no, made very it's simple. simple. Yeah. It's simple because most people haven't got the time or the inclination to go out and do what I call join I the desk off. In back, so we're on Friday, we're out, and it's you know, like, yeah, so I feel like I'm all twisted. I'm just going to try that. And you went, oh, please don't. <laughs> Didn't you? Yeah. So, yeah, because it's not that difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Golf's a very, very simple... It's a very simple game that people make really difficult because they go looking for the most complicated solution. Yeah. But the last thing that they're thinking about is what that thing is doing to that thing. So now all we're thinking about is what that thing's doing to that thing. So we finish off with a good one. Go on then. Start at three. So three better questions. Are you at three at address? Yes. Keep it constant, turn the face. <laughs> Little baby draw. But it's also come out the middle of the club face. Yeah, it has. 
<laughs> yeah? Right, Simon, thank you very much. My pleasure. I enjoyed learning. So if you want a lesson with Simon, Simon's here at Carrie Screen, his social's going across. And Simon, again, thank you very much. My pleasure. And hopefully I don't see you too soon. No, you won't see me. <laughs> you just do that, you won't see me at all. Happy days. <laughs>